Well, we're all used to GCSE accountability being measured by the percentages of students getting 5A to C grades at GCSE, but that's changing. As of summer 2016, there are going to be four new measures. Two of those new measures are really similar to what we're used to, but two of them are significantly different and much more complex as well. The first two measures are fairly straightforward to understand. Attainment 8 and Progress 8, however, are significantly different and more complex. Attainment 8 will show the average grades of all the pupils in the school in their best eight subjects. This will be expressed as a number, which will represent a grade. For example, in a school with an attainment 8 score of 6, the average grade for pupils in their best 8 subjects is a B. If the attainment score was 6.5, the average grade for pupils would have been halfway between a B and an A. The Progress 8 score shows whether pupils have performed better than expected in their GCSEs, considering their starting point. And Key Stage 2 results are used to predict each pupil's expected grades across 8 subjects at the end of Key Stage 4. This is expressed as a number which represents how much more or less progress in grades pupils in a school make on average. So let's say the pupils in a school had an expected average grade across all of their subjects of 4.5, which is halfway between a D and a C. If that school has a progress 8 score of 0.5, that means the average grade for the school was 5, which is equivalent to a C. You might be wondering which eight subjects count towards these new measures. Not all subjects do count, and knowing which ones do is a little bit complicated, but we're going to have a go here at explaining it. So the subjects are split into three different baskets. Basket A includes two subjects, maths and one of English language or English literature. The points for the two subjects in this basket are double weighted but only if a pupil has taken both English language and English literature. What this means in practice is that in most schools, pupils will do both English language and English literature. Basket B consists of the three best scoring EBAC subjects. Basket C consists of the three highest scoring other GCSE subjects or high value vocational qualifications. EBAC subjects can be included in this basket as well, but they don't have to be. It might help us to take a look at a worked example, and here is one. Let's call him Jack. Jack did 10 GCSEs. He did English literature as well as English language, so he gets double weighting for his English language score and for his math score, which both go into basket A. His top three EBAC scores are biology, chemistry and physics. So they are counted and go into basket B. His top three other scores are for English literature, art and music. They are counted in basket C. If you add up his scores from the baskets, you get 51, which divided by 10 gives Jack an attainment score of 5.1, which is just above a C grade. If you want an idea of how he performed, the average attainment score for schools in England in 2015 was 4.74. So what you can see from all these new measures is that they are significantly more complex than the old measures and they take quite a bit of time to calculate and to get your head around. But I think there is one really big advantage to all this complexity, which is that under these systems, the progress that's made by all pupils will count towards a school's headline measure. Whereas, as we know, the problem with the 5A star to C measure was that it was only progress made by pupils at the CD threshold that went towards that final headline measure. I think that Progress 8 and Attainment 8 are definitely an improvement on the system we had before. If you do need to find out any more information about any of these measures, you can do so by looking at the DFE website.